So the struct is a new way of storing data which has been introduced in Game Maker Studio 2.3. Most people are probably aware of these by now, they've been out for a little while. There has been some talk among Game Maker users that uh, structs completely obsolete DS maps now. And while they didn't quite have all the features that DS maps had at first, they had a few new features such as the ability to inherit from each other and the ability to contain methods and uh, run code in their scope. But with the 2.3.1 update that came out not too long ago, uh, a few more features have been added to structs, and the old DS map system has pretty much completely been obsoleted in every uh, in every way. Structs are more lightweight than DS maps, and you can use the dot operator on them if you want. Uh, like I said earlier, they can inherit from each other, and they can contain methods which run code in their scope. Structs are automatically garbage collected, which means you don't have to explicitly destroy them when you're done with them. Which means as long as the garbage collector is turned on, you don't really have the potential for a memory leak, which is always nice to have. 2.3.1 introduced a few things, such as the JSON stringify and JSON parse functions. So now the ability to write structs and arrays to JSON and read them back out is now a built-in part of GameMaker. And I have to say, this is something I wasn't really expecting, but there is now a new accessor that is part of GameMaker. And these are fees with structs. Let me show you what I mean. So I am going to create a file of code. Script one is fine. I'm not really big on the names here. I should make the text bigger though. Uh, so let's create ourselves a struct. I'm just going to create an anonymous one. I'm not going to use a constructor. Let's give it some. Uh, let's give it some variables. That'll do for now. Uh, as we know from before, we can access the things inside the struct with the dot operator. So if I were to show message. Uh, structs.name or age. By the way, in case anybody has been wondering, someone asked this not too long ago, the reason that name is highlighted in red here is because um, there are a few variables which are used in structs that pertain to sequences. Uh, I think name is one, I think position is one, no. Rotation is another one. Uh, there are a few more. It doesn't really mean anything if you use sequences and you use some of the built-in uh, functions regarding them which return structs. Uh, they'll have some variables. It gets a special color in the IDE for that reason. GameMaker doesn't really know whether this, this struct here is uh, one that actually has a variable called name or not, and it's just highlight highlighting it anyway. Uh, anyway, if I can run the game, we can get a pop-up with, with Ted and uh, Leet, which is the best age. We know this already. So what we can do now is we can uh, treat this, we can use this with square brackets. And if this was a DS map, uh, we would be able to access the things inside it with the accessor, which goes like question mark and a string containing the, um, the key that we want to look up in the DS map, name in double quotes, age in double quotes, whatever. Um, this will not work now because this is a struct and not a DS map and uh, GameMaker is going to complain about that. But what we can do is use the, um, the dollar sign, and we can use that as an accessor to access the stuff inside a struct directly. So you can see name, Ted, uh, age, leet. Now, given that the dollar sign is a symbol that is generally used by American programmers with American keyboards, I do not know, and I will put it on the screen right now, if that would be localized to something like the British pound symbol or some other currency symbol for other parts of the world. Hey. I kind of hope it is if you live in a region where the keyboards that they manufacture don't have that symbol on them, it can be kind of a pain in the neck to, you know, use them. You'll have to memorize the alt code or put it on a hotkey or copy and paste it from the internet or something. So as you can, oops, as you can imagine with, a, uh, with an accessor, this goes both ways. Name. And we can assign something to that uh, member of the struct using the accessor as well as reading from it. So we can say name is going to equal, what's a funny name? That should be noticeably different from what we had before. I am not actually going to see that because I'm not actually displaying it. Uh, we can we can set Albus per Percival Wilford Brian Dumbledore. I almost got through that without um, messing it up. Uh, we can set that to this struct's name. 
and we can print it out again. And you can see it changes. So something that you're allowed to do in DS Maps, although it's not necessarily a good idea, is to use uh, keys, which are not strings. Uh, for example, you could say in a DS Map uh, struct with a key of like 50 or something, which isn't a string. It isn't in a double quotes. And this would work as long as the DS Map obviously has a key with that name. And the same is true for structs. I'm going to comment this out because I don't really need it anymore. So let's come up with a value for this uh, the struct key, the struct variable, which is not a string. Uh, we're, I'll, I'll just use like the number 50 again or something like that. And it's going to let us do this uh, again, just as a, um, a DS map would. And you can see the data is there. You could use, as far as I know, any data type as the key inside the struct accessor. Uh, you could use a string, obviously, which is probably what you should be using. You can use a number as I am here right now. You can even use other structs, which you really, really probably should not do. But if you really want to, don't let me stop you. This brings up kind of an interesting point in that one of the ways you can create a hexadecimal number is to prepend a dollar sign to the number. So if I were to say, uh, let's get rid of that. If I were to say var number equals 50, that's, that's a number, we know what numbers are. I can also say number equals dollar sign 50 and this would no longer be the decimal five zero, it would be the hexadecimal number five zero, which is in base 1080. Which, um, as we can see, this has the potential to cause some confusion when you try to use the struct accessor because what is, um, what is the value that is actually going into the struct? Is it a 50 with the struct accessor or is it and an 80 in decimal, five zero in hex. Um, I see it's a, I see it's accepting it either way. So it seems that the struct accessor takes priority over the, uh, the hexadecimal notation. Hey. And honestly, if nothing else, that's probably another good reason that you shouldn't just use numbers as the keys inside structs uh, using the struct accessor. Anyway, there are a few uh, more functions pertaining to structs, which. Uh, some of them have been around for a while, and by a while, I mean since 2.3.0 came out. Some of them are, I believe, new additions in 2.3.1. You have variable, variable, variable struct exists. You have variable struct get. Uh, variable struct get names. Variable struct get names count. Uh, what is there? Variable struct removed. And variable struct set. These are similar to some variable related functions that existed in, in previous versions of GameMaker going back a long time. Previously, I was not a fan of these. You have things like variable global exists, variable instance exists. I don't like the practice of not knowing whether or not a variable exists ahead of time. Someone just screamed outside. At the very least, you can always, always, always define your variables either in an object's creation code or in like the game's creation code if it's a case for a, a global variable. And if you ever don't know whether or not a variable has been defined or not, you've probably already done something wrong. And Unless you want to start tearing your hair out in the next couple of days, you should probably just define your variables in the create event. I don't have the same distaste for these functions when it comes to structs as I did with when it comes to instances, especially now, given that structs really are just a an abstraction and to an extent a replacement for DS maps. Not officially. When I say that, like DS maps are still a part of GML, you can still use them. I just don't think there's really very much reason to use them. In several of my projects, I have just gone through and removed all DS maps completely. And I think it makes my code quite a bit nicer. In a very technical sense, that's all instances were in, in previous versions of GameMaker. They were just, let's call them less accessible abstractions of DS maps. And you could treat them as such. I just don't think that's a very good way to look at them since the way that they tend to be used in practice looks a lot more like a, an object with a bunch of variables already defined. Anyway, back to the point. These will do what pretty much they say on the label. You can use variable struct exists to check whether or not a struct actually has a, uh, a variable inside it. So let's pass it a struct and pass it a, um, a name for a variable, which can be something like, 
I don't know. Bananas. And this is going to return false because uh, the struct does not have a variable called bananas. And if we pass it something instead more like name. What is the line that duplicates the current line of code you're on? I think it's control D. Anyway, name returns as one, or also known as true, because uh, it does contain a variable with that name. Control D duplicates the current line. I do that a lot by accident. Just a reminder, this has to be a string. This can't be a, a simply a variable unless that variable contains a string. If you try to do this, the game will crash because the variable doesn't exist. And you need to check to see if a, uh, a name or some other value exists inside the struct. A uh, variable struct get, again, this does exactly what it sounds like. This just returns the, um, it's, it's basically the longer form of, uh, of this up here using the struct accessor. What's it? That's the struct accessor. Variable struct to get names returns an array of all the variables that the struct contains. If you want to, for some reason, iterate over everything in a struct, you can use this. It's not something that you really do often, unless you're literally just using a struct as a jumbled bag of data. As with DS maps, the keys are stored in a, for all intents and purposes, random order. They're not alphabetized, they're not stored in order that they were added or anything like that. Don't count on the variable names being in any particular order. The analog for this with DS maps would have been something like DS map find first or DS map find last, which would return the first or last keys in DS map and let you iterate over them with DS map find next and DS map find previous. Um, this is nicer. You can just loop over them with a for loop in the array, and you don't have to do anything stupid to iterate over the uh, over the DS map. A variable struct to get names count is just the number of variables that are inside the struct, the number of things that are inside the struct. It's basically the length of this array. Should you need it, variable struct remove. If you're using this like a like an object in a game, you don't really ever need to remove variables. If you're using them like a DS map. Uh, this is the equivalent of DS map, what was it, delete? Yeah, DS map delete, which would remove a specific key from a DS map. And variable struct set. That's exactly what's going on here. Okay. DS maps are dead. Long live the struct. So as I say in pretty much every video, this isn't something you have to do. It's not like you now need to drop everything and, um, and, and get rid of every DS map in your game and replace it with a struct. I believe there is a small performance increase if you access something in a struct with dot operator like this rather than like this because GameMaker can hash this value ahead of time and it doesn't have to do it during runtime like it would have to if you just if you just gave it any old string to use as the key in a DS map but, and I can't stress this enough, this is like the micro-optimization to end all micro-optimizations. Don't worry about the amount of time it takes to access variables inside a struct. GML is a slow interpreted language, hey. and if your game is performing badly, it is 100% going to be because of the other things that are happening in your game, and it's not because of the amount of time it takes to access a, a variable inside a struct. So, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else worth mentioning. And there's one, one more minor thing that comes to mind. So, if you try to access something in a struct or an instance that did not exist under normal circumstances, uh, let's say show message struct and... Let's try to display Ted's height on the screen or something like that. Height is not a variable that exists in the struct, and if you try to access that with the dot operator, GameMaker will crash as it often does when you try to use a variable that doesn't exist. Whereas, if you were to use the struct operator, or the struct accessor, I'm sorry, instead of crashing and causing an error, this will instead return undefined. That's a minor difference. It is a difference that you can take advantage of if you want to, because it is a fast way to see if a, uh, a key exists inside a struct. This is how DS maps work. If you had a DS map and you tried to pull out a, um, a key that did not exist, it would give you undefined instead of crashing. At least I think I had quite a bit nicer than trying to uh, check everything with DS map exists constantly. Uh, you could just obtain the value from the DS map and check if it's undefined or not. Some people may think the opposite. Some people may think it's dumb and pointless and 
not something that's ever worth doing. Um, but regardless, structs work the same way. If you try to access something that is not inside a struct uh, using the accessor, uh, you will get undefined instead of a, uh, of a hard crash. So, these things are really cool. Again, if you want to use structs now to replace every DS map in your game, uh, you can do that. I have done that, at least in one project. Did I say all of my projects earlier in the middle of the video when I mentioned it? I don't remember if I said all or uh, one, because I have only so far done this in one project, and it's um, it's made my code quite a bit easier. Every time you don't have to type DS map destroy and worry about a memory leak is a uh, is a good time in my book. You don't have to worry about whether or not something exists, a, an instance exists, or a DS map exists. They're just kind of there, and then the garbage collector will take care of it when it runs next. Really nice. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to stop talking now. I am probably not going to make this code available for download in the video description via GitHub. Uh, it's only nine lines long, and it's 100% just demonstration code, and I don't think there's really any point in cluttering up the, uh, the GitHub repository organization thing that I made just for this. The best way to learn how this stuff works is just to mess around with it yourself at any rate. So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these things being made, uh, there's a link to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these game dev videos a week. I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.